now that we've learned about data frames and how to make them, we're going to talk about how we subset a data frame. And subsetting just means we want to take certain elements of it. So maybe it's certain rows or certain columns, or even if we only want, say, rows where a certain column is greater than a number or something like that. You'll find the syntax rather familiar because it's pretty much the same as how we subset a vector. But in this case, we've got more than one dimension. So whereas before, we would write the name of the vector, brackets, and then a number to denote the position. Here we're going to do the same thing, except we have to make sure to specify a row and a column. We're going to use the data frame that we made before. We're going to use the cookie problems data frame. And to remind you, here's what the cookie data frame is. It's a bunch of names, a bunch of true, false, or Boolean factors. And then we've got two numerical vectors. And then we combine them into a data frame called cookie problems. So what we're going to practice now is how to subset that data frame. And it's very small, but this is going to come in handy mostly when we've got huge data sets later on. And it's also useful in graphing when we only want certain elements. So we can subset the data frame and then graph it if we only want certain bits of data in our graph. The easiest way to subset a data frame is to name the rows and columns that you want. So if you remember, we're going to have the name of the data frame, and then we're going to have the brackets to say within that what we want. And it's always going to be rows, comma, columns. So here I've selected rows 1 through 3 and all columns. So if you want all rows or all columns, all you have to do is leave that blank. And you don't need to put a space there, but you can. So this is going to select rows 1 through 3 of cookie problems. And if we run this, we see that we only have three rows. It's taken off that last name there. So my second example, we have both rows and columns specified. We have rows 2 through 5 and column 3. So we should only have the siblings column, if this is correct, and rows 2 through 5. And we see that it, it just put, outputs a vector. When you only get one row of something or one column, it's just going to output a vector. So we have number of siblings for everybody from rows 2 through 5. Now I'm giving you a bunch of examples just so that you can have the whole range of options. So here we've got rows 2 through 5 and columns 1 through 3. So this is specifying range of both rows and columns. So that's what we get when we run this. There are also a couple different ways of referring to rows or columns or certain values in those rows or columns. So the next line I have here, I've got rows 2 through 5, but I've used the column names to specify which columns I want. So I said the C to combine or concatenate the column's names, and the column's siblings. So this will give me rows 2 through 5 with only columns names and siblings. So if I run this, you can see that it gives me just names and siblings. So that's another way of doing it. And you have to make sure that the names of your columns are in quotation marks, or it won't work. So in the line below, I've done the same thing, except for I've named a new data frame. And I've said I only want in this data frame cookie problems when we've got all the rows but only columns called names, cookies, and siblings. So I run this, then it will show up in our data. So here it is down here, and we've got all these numbers and factors. And if we view this, it gives us all the rows and columns, names, cookies, and siblings. So getting a little more complex with our subsetting, here we've got, again, the same with our rows and our columns. So we've got columns when the name of the column is names, name is cookies, name is siblings. So we've got three columns, but the rows here are slightly different. And here is where we're going to introduce a new symbol, which is the dollar sign. And so in R, the dollar sign means when. So this line just means cookie problems when hungry. So if you recall, hungry is a true-false column. You can either be hungry, true, or not hungry, false. So when we say that we want rows when hungry, that's saying we only want rows when the hungry column equals true. So that's a new way of subsetting it, where we're actually looking at the values within a row or a column and saying we want to subset based on what those values are. So if I run this, it shows, and notice it doesn't show the column hungry because I didn't say that I wanted that, but if we were to add in hungry and then run that that line, and I've put this on two lines just so that you can see the whole thing on my screen, but you can definitely put, oh, there's a bunch of spaces there, but you can definitely put it like this, but I've just done this so that you can see the whole thing. So if I run this again, it'll show 
and this is a way to double check yourself, that the only values in the hungry column are ones where hungry equals true. That's the way to do it if you have a true false column and you only want true or false. This is the same thing as, we don't need to put this, but equals equals true. So this will give you the exact same thing. The columns when hungry equals true. And so the way you do false is you just put the double equal sign and you say instead of true, you want when it equals false. Then we can run this line and it should give us the opposite. So then it gives us the other two rows where hungry equals false. Now we're going to get even more complicated with it and we're going to start combining a whole bunch of different things to say very specifically what we want. So in this next example, we've got, again, we've got the columns where column names are names, cookies, and siblings. But then in the rows column, we've got this really complicated function here. All this is, is we want cookie problems when the row is cookies and cookie problems when the row is siblings. And since those are both number columns, we can compare them. What we want is the number of cookies is greater than the number of siblings. So when someone has more cookies than siblings, that's what this is going to give us, rows where that's true in these specific columns. So if we run this, it gives us things where the number of cookies is greater than the number of siblings. So we don't have to just compare them to each other, we can also compare them to a number. So our next example, we have rows where cookie problems when the column cookies is greater than two and cookie problems hungry equals true. So this is where the number of cookies are greater than two and the person is hungry and only in columns names, cookies, and siblings. So if we run this, that's only true of one person. And we can change any of these symbols. So we could say instead of and, we could say or, and that's this weird kind of line symbol here. So if we said that, then it would give us a different set of values. We can also say is less than two, and that would give us, again, a different set of values. Or we can say when hungry equals false. So then select that whole thing, and it's the opposite. So we can really mess with this a lot, and you can this can be really long, but that's the gist of it, is you can really get very specific with what you want out of this. The important things here are the brackets, which within those you should have rows, comma, columns, and the when symbol, which is this dollar sign. Cookie problems when hungry equals something, or when hungry, which just means when hungry is true and then the concatenate, which will allow you to check multiple columns. So just to make this one thing clear, here we have names when hungry equals false, but we can write this two ways. We can say names when hungry double equals sign equals false, or we can say names when not hungry, which is that exclamation point means not. So those are two ways of getting the exact same thing. So if we run this, we get the two names when hungry equals false, but names not hungry also gives us the two same names. So those are both completely legitimate ways of writing it. But sometimes you may find that one works and one doesn't. So if I were to say, instead of saying the equal, double equal sign false, if I were to say when not hungry, that will not work. It doesn't quite understand what you're doing. So that's a situation where you'd use, instead of the exclamation point, what you'd use the double equal sign equals false. So it just depends on the situation. So in this lesson, we've learned a whole lot about subsetting data frames, how to manipulate them, how to get very specific values within them, and I've given you a bunch of practice examples. In the next lesson, we're going to learn even more about data frames and how to deal with them.